So hi and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dream Machine DM1 Pro S. So my name is Bearded Bob and I've been doing this series going through game peripherals and at the moment we're going through the Dream Machine series here to give you an idea of kind of what's changed over the time. There's three versions to this and there's also a mini that I'm going to do. The next one in line is the Pro S. We've already done the Pro. I'll put the link in the description as I will do for everything else of what my opinion was on that on Dream Machine's first release. And we're going to finish with the FPS one, which I know a few of you are waiting for, and it's certainly coming out. It'll be out within the next week. I promise you that. So let's take a look at it. So one of the things I noticed straight off the bat is how similar the Pro S is to the Pro. I didn't realize that straight off the bat. I probably should have looking at the box, but it's not the kind of thing you're looking at when you're picking up mice. So anything that's similar, I'm just going to refer you back to the video that I've done for the Pro. So for instance, the build quality is the same, the matte finish is the same, the shapes the same, the switches are the same, all that stuff. Look at the Pro video, I'll put, I'll put the link in the description. The one thing to note that is different here with the build quality is this one doesn't rock. Yay! So maybe this one was a little bit of a gimped product that came off the line, or they certainly improved it for the Pro S. So the first difference here is the price. This is £50 UK, so it's about £10 more than the Pro, and it's about $55. US So probably about $10 or $15 more. So one of the changes here, and there's a few, is the change the sensor out from the PMW3310 to the PMW3360 that's in here. And I've run some tests as I normally do, doing the drawing test, just to give you an idea of kind of how that's performed. So I've done is I've paired this up next to the Pro here, so it gives you an idea of kind of comparison, which I thought would be good to see if there's a difference in the sensor, and I certainly could tell the difference. I found the Pro S, the, or the 3360 sensor, to be a little bit better on straight lines. I found it a little bit more accurate. You can certainly see that in the comparison pictures here. But the 3310 sensor here did wonder if I was doing quite a lot of presses and pickups and push downs. So I don't think that's gonna cause you a problem in real life, but on the test, it certainly showed a little bit of a problem there, but overall the 3360 I was impressed with as a sensor. On the slam test, no issues whatsoever. Didn't spin out, didn't even try to spin out. It's a very good sensor, it's been around a while. And in this implementation here, it's done very well. One of the other changes in the sensor is the lift off distance. This is now 1.8 millimeters to 2.0 millimeters. The sensor DPI is changed via the button on the top, and that comes at 400, 800, 1600, 2400, 4800, and 12,000. So things like the human benchmark test, like I say, the Pro is exactly the same, the Zowie polling rate's the same, the latency is the same on these mice, these mice have got the same switches, same cabling, so there's no difference here between the Pro and the Pro S, but what I did do was I did the 3D trainer test here to give you an idea of the sensor which has changed is obviously the 3360 in here and to give you an idea kind of whether that makes a difference or not and overall it has made a difference i got a score of 63,137 which is certainly not my highest score on this so the mouse is good but for me i can certainly get a better score with a different mouse but it's certainly better than the pro which was interesting to see now you could put that down to me maybe being a little bit better at the time or could put it down to the mouse being better which i think personally the sensor in this is better if you want me to do other mice like the Zowie Diva, Zowie FK2, which I've got now, the final mouse, let me know and I will certainly do that and give you an idea of which ones work for me. Um, and you might be able to take that forward and help yourselves. But again, it's a little bit kind of subjective to my ability and what works in my hands. But let's have a competition. Let's see how well you do against me. Probably beat me, but we'll see. So as I've said, the scroll wheel is the same, the buttons are the same. It would have been nice for Dream machine here to have done something different with the wheel. I'm not a fan of the rubber texture on these, as I've said, and the wheel here is no different on this version. So the switch has been the same using the OMROM 20 million clicks, and it's also got the same scroll wheel click. The force tests are identical. I did these, but there's no point in me showing you that. Check out the pro review for those. One of the differences is the weight. They say it comes in at 85 grams. The pro came in at 89 grams. Well, that's what they said, and they both come in at the same weight of about 83 grams. So. Not sure why they keep changing the weights because the mice are identical here, they're still coming in at the same weight. 
The cable on this one, as you can see, it's stood up here on the table, is still trash. It's certainly the one thing that I hate about this mouse, and it's one thing that would put me off buying it. And I know the FPS one does have a better cable, so I'm looking forward to doing a proper test on that and showing you guys what it's like. But for now, this one, you're going to have to power cord it or find some other way to make the cable slightly better. Even a bungee, like I've said on this before, would have an issue because it's very rigid. It'd probably push the bungee over. So coming to the final difference here between the Pro S and the Pro. And the Pro S here now comes with software. Thank God. I mean, that has took some time for companies to do that. And it's nice to see Dream Machine here have done this for the Pro mouse. So let me go through the software now to show you what you can do. So I'll go for a quick preview of what's included in the software. So you've got your standard button configuration that you can remap here. Remap the left click to assign a macro, media, all kinds of stuff here, DPI, office functions, good presets here. You can also do it to a key binding itself or keyboard shortcut here if you can't see one in the list. So there's a lot of customizability here, which is good. It would be nice to be able to just click on the button on the right hand side, but you can't do that. What a few other people might want to understand is if you can remap the DPI button, which is the one on the top, and you can do that. As you can see here, each button, in fact, can have exactly the same functionality. You can map any button to do anything with the same function, which is good to see. What you also get is four profiles that you can set. Would have been nice to have a few more here. Razer give you unlimited profiles. Logitech give you five profiles, which I think is a bit limiting. It would have been nice to have been able to save as many profiles as you want rather than button, like a drop down menu, but maybe something for later in the software to be able to change. So what you can do is you can save the profile name. To save as game profile, let's call this Fortnite. Click OK, and now it's a Fortnite profile, so you can see which one it is. The only problem is, again, you can't, it doesn't rename the actual name of the button, it's still profile one. Would have been nice to change the name here without having to have this profile text box. But hey, so the next time you've got DPI, and this is some of the interesting ones here, you've got four levels of DPI presets, although the mouse itself without the software comes with six. It would have been nice to have had six. I'm not going to beat too much on the software here because it is pretty good. You've also got the ability to change, which is nice here, the independent vertical and horizontal axes, which is good. So you can change the DPI on up and down, as well as left and right. And that's nice to see. I sometimes find that when I'm sniping and I'm on DPI 400, which is what I use, that it would be nice to have slightly high DPI for up and down, just to finally adjust my um, height when I'm sniping. And it's good to see this software here allows you to do that on an independent axis. That's good. The acceleration, which we're going to ignore. The other option you can do here, you can change the polling rates. So it's good to see 125, 250, 500, and 1,000 hertz. Most people are going to run 500 or 1,000, but it's nice to see the other options as well. Another feature people have always wanted to know is you can turn off the backlight, and you can do that. You can have no light on. You can have it dim, standard, or bright. You can change the fade in and out. It's nice to see you can change the color. You can do it for the logo. You can also do it for the scroll wheel and match it to your setup. They're both linked together, though. They're not independent. So only one color across the whole mouse. And then finally, you've got macros. You can assign macros to do things like MMO or something like that if you wanted them on the side buttons, maybe, to trigger a certain combination. The usual stuff there. For overall, not bad software. A few little tweaks it could make, but it's a good start. And it's nice to see it's included now. So overall, my conclusion on this mouse is I love the shape. I'm not a fan of the matte finish. The overall build quality is good. The cable's trash. The buttons are pretty good. There's a little bit of pre and post travel. I'm not particularly a fan of the scroll wheel. And for £50, $55, US dollars, it's starting to get into more of the expensive kind of territory there. The Pro is a little bit cheaper, but the 3360 is certainly good. And for me, for now, I'd probably look at the a different mouse or potentially wait for the FPS review. Or well, unless you know what it's like, I'd probably consider buying that. So as always, thanks for watching. This video is a little bit shorter than normal. Like I say, it's very similar to the Pro, so I didn't want to go through everything again. And until the next one, I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.